Welcome, PRS community. Mike Golay here, Director of Operations. Living the fact that we have almost, uh, it's approaching up to 600 plus people. It's growing in this room. Uh, we have a lot of Americans. I see somebody from Abu Dhabi, North Carolina, Oregon, Berlin. Es ist gut zu sehen, ja? Okay, we know German here, South Africa. Um, British Columbia, Philippines, oh, I love it. Dallas, Texas, Hanover, Germany, India. I could go on, Missouri. Oh, love it, I love it. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching it on Facebook, this is an online community where we simply read the word of God. I'm gonna bring Pastor Jeff in right now. Pastor Jeff is our UK director and he joins us every single week. Um, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> We're doing great, Mike. Doing great. It's good to be with you once again today. Jeff, if our internet connection goes out, uh, then you can continue reading. Folks, I'm actually uh, doing my reserve military duty. We had a wonderful Sunday this morning. We did meet. We also did a, a live feed. We did both here, and um, our military personnel heard the word of God, and so I'm really happy about that. Today, we are going to be reading... Genesis chapter 36, and um, this is, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, we're using the New King James Version. I'm going to jump straight in. Just let me give you a disclaimer here. I read through this chapter twice, and it is all names. It's all names. Um, will you forgive me if I read certain sections and then defer to you? You can look at these names later. But for me to be able to go through all of these names, I, I honestly, it's just too much. It's just too much for me. And so it's basically the family of Esau, and we descri it, it describes what's going to happen here. So, um, And then we're as a gift, we're going to read all of 2 Peter, all three chapters, and we're going to sit and read that just as if the first century churches were listening to it themselves. Remember, when they read all of this, it was all in one city. So, uh, Jeff, will you lead us in prayer for the time that we read, and then we'll go straight in. Absolutely, Mike. My pleasure. Father, we do thank you once again. Lord, literally hearing about all the countries where people are tuning in from, from Norway to New Zealand, Lord, we just see you moving and working in hearts and lives. We thank you that your word is alive. It's powerful, Lord, and you want to move and work in each one of our lives today. So, Lord, may we take on board this word, which is literally that seed that's sown in our heart, which is able to save our souls and to lead us to all truth. And so, Lord, may we walk in that truth. And, Lord, I just pray that this time together in your word would, would shine light in, in lives today to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, and to, Lord, truly, maybe even today, set some people free. Yeah. Because, Lord, you say the truth will set you free. And, Lord, we're going to read your word, which is truth today. So may you use this time for your glory, for your purposes, and for your honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Ironically, when we read Second Peter, there's a huge theme of the end days there, too, which is right up our alley here in Behold Israel. Mm -hmm. So without further ado... Genesis chapter 36. Now, this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. And of course, Edom in Hebrew is red. And he came out of the womb red, right? And he, he settled in a red area uh, called Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, uh, Aholbama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zilbeon, uh, the Hivite, and Basemoth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebaioth. Now, Adah bore Eliphaz to Asa, and Basemoth bore Ruel, and Eholibama eh eh bore Yeush, Yaalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Okay, now I'm not going to read the whole thing, remember. Okay, we're going to keep going. Then Esau took, wi Esau took wives his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and all his goods which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country far away from the presence of his brother Jacob. Why? For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together, and the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt in Mount Seir, 
And here it says again, Esau is Edom. That's the And then it gives a genealogy, verse 9. Okay. Um, and then you scroll ahead, and then you go to verse 15. It says, and here's the chiefs of the son of Esau, and you can, you can read about that. And then you get down to verse 20, and these were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. And you can go and read there. Um, and then the kings, the kings of Edom, which is an interesting piece, that's in verse 31, which takes you to the end of the chapter. Now, again, I'm so sorry, but I just, there's so much here, and I would be, I would be uh, tongue-tied. So I think it's best for all of us. I, I believe me, I, I think I'm doing everyone a favor by doing that because I really wanted to get into Second Peter. What we, know, what we need to understand from Genesis chapter 36 is that Esau and Jacob were enemies. They, they seemed to reconcile in the previous chapter, and he settles in a different region. And uh, that region uh, is a very interesting place. And... Uh, We'll see what will happen there in the area of Petra in the future and so on. But now we're going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1. Listen to this, folks. Read with us. 2 Peter chapter 1. Okay. 2 Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent. To remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth, yet, yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must, I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, 
that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to keep it going because um, that's how they did this back then. It was a letter. And then we'll have our reflection at the end. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of the eight, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reveling accusation against them before the Lord. Wow, think about that. But these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness and as those who counted the pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes. Look at the hard words. Carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetousness practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it and to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, as a dog returns to his own vomit and a so sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. And now we go to chapter three. Jeff, close us off. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things consider as con continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed 
perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. I am literally blown away, folks. Uh, Patricia, you called it earlier uh, when you said in the forum, the scriptures are so important. You know, this could have been written yesterday to describe today. I mean, think about that. I haven't read Second Peter lately. I, I, we're just coming back to it. I think the last time I read this was maybe a year or two ago. And reading it now in today's context, it's like this could have been written this week. I mean, the Bible called it. Jeff, I mean, <laughs> any final thoughts before we have a reflection and a final prayer? Well, you know, as, as we as we see this, we're, we're given this prophetic word. God has told us things ahead of time so that you and I would know what's coming. We can see the writing on the wall. We can interpret the handwriting that's on the wall as we read these scriptures. And yeah, we want to keep gathering together and all the more as the day is approaching because we see we need that. We need to be together as believers. Second Peter, man, a lot of your friends right now, just have them read Second Peter. And you tell me that Second Peter does not call out, call out the times that we live in today in the human nature. Let's all just have a few seconds of reflection. Let the Spirit of God speak to us right now. Is there an area of your life that you need to address? Is there something within the scriptures that you read that you need to take action on? Let's reflect. Lord, amazing that we live in times that it is as if Peter was writing right now for us today. And not only just within the United States, but all over the world. I pray for every soul watching this, that you would do your work in their heart. Start with me and Jeff. Mm -hmm. Work in us yes, Lord. and allow us, Lord, to be readers uh, that come with full conviction of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, Mike, um, as you just said that too, 
it's interesting, isn't it? As this could have been written yesterday. Like people, as they say to us, oh, where's the promise of his coming? As we're hearing, even today, we see people mocking. Oh. They're fulfilling <laughs> scripture by mocking in these last days. I, it's unbelievable. I'm sorry, Jeff, when you're reading, I, you might have heard a grunt or a oh or a oom um when I was, when I was, I just couldn't, I couldn't stop myself because like I said, it's been about two years since I read this and I'm reading it in a whole new light right now. And it's just shocking how close it is to where we're at. It should create a sense of urgency. And so um, I want to thank every one of you. And uh, I see the, the forum, amens, amens. Look at this. People, people seem to be agreeing here. Kelly says, amen. Karen says, amen. Olivia Chavez, yes, amen. Look at this. Lucille. Um, Miranda, Louise, she loves this apparently. Thank you. Um, Cindy, thank you. Well, uh, that is all for this week. Um, I didn't want to take the risk of having a guest. I only have one little bar and reception where I'm at. So we're going to close off. We will see you again next week with better internet connection. And uh, we love you. And just keep reading and listening to the scriptures, my friends. Mike and Jeff, bye for now.